Hey, Mike here from learndevops.com.au. Head on over and join us at our Discord community. What I want to talk about today is Terraform state file management. Just going to go over some theory, just going to go over some ideas. So Terraform state file, what is the Terraform state file? When you produce some Terraform code in HashiCorp configuration language, and you tell Terraform to apply that code to a cloud environment, AWS, GCP, even a non-cloud environment, because of course Terraform can talk to multiple different providers, it will produce a state file. Now, it's a very complicated, deeply nested, very long-winded, thousands upon thousands of lines, in most case, JSON file, JS. O N file. You shouldn't touch this file directly at all. It's very, very unlikely that you need to touch this file directly. But what it essentially boils down to is it is a database that Terraform uses in order to determine what it's previously done. So it takes your code, it makes it live in the provider, and then it puts it inside the state file. You need to keep it well protected because it's very sensitive. It contains passwords. So anything you put inside your HCL code goes into that state file. Because of course, if you say A equals one in your code, and then it goes and makes that a reality in some provider, it has to keep track of that. So the value one might be sensitive to you that goes inside the state file. So you have to protect it. And so you have to be careful where you store it. And that's what I want to talk about today. A good question to ask is, what happens if I lose this state file? Well, your infrastructure will be fine. It'll still be live, but you won't be able to manage it with Terraform anymore. So that's gone. You're going to have to reconstruct the state file by importing everything. But if you try and do a Terraform apply with no state file, it will assume that because there's no state file, all of the stuff in your code doesn't exist anymore and it'll try and create it again in the cloud provider. So that's not good. Okay, so you need to make sure that you're protecting it because it's very sensitive. And if you lose it, you can't use Terraform to manage your environment anymore. That is not good. If you have any questions on this, then head on over to learndevops.com.au, scroll down a little bit and click the join the community button. And that'll send you over to our Discord where we can have a little chat. I do two streams live over there every single week. All right, the first thing that you need to be concerned about is protecting the state file. So you've got local storage options and you've got remote storage options. So locally, you can store it in Git. You can throw it up there into a Git repository and that's at least backed up. So that gives you the not losing it part, but it doesn't give you really the security part. It's in a Git repository, it's plain text in that repository. Of course, you can encrypt it ahead of time, maybe using PGP keys or something. That's probably a good idea, but it's going to be plain text in that, in that repository and anyone who has access to it is going to be able to read it. You can also put it onto uh, localized networking. So if you don't want to keep it in the repository, you just want to put the code up there you could put it maybe on a network drive that is very well replicated, a network attached storage system or something else in order to make sure that it's backed up. But again, anyone with access to that drive is also going to be able to just read the file. And again, that's not good. So your other options are your remote storage options. So you've got S3, Azure Files, Terraform Cloud. There's actually quite a lot of options. So you've got S3, that's a very common one. You can stick the file up into an S3 bucket. What that means is you can actually protect it a bit better than because what you can do is you can run your Terraform inside a CI pipeline and the CI runner itself is the only thing that can actually go and access that S3 bucket. So it's the only one with the credentials to go and see what's in the bucket. So it can pull the state down, Terraform does its thing, and then it puts the state back up in the S3 bucket, but users don't have direct access to it. So they can't pull the file down, so that protects it in that way. You can do the same again with your with Azure files, basically the same thing as S3, but with a slightly added bonus, which I'll come to in just a second. And then you've got your Terraform cloud as well. So if you're into your enterprise solutions and you want to use something that's just purpose-built to just stick the state file into, it's encrypted, it's stored, it's replicated, it's backed up, then that's Terraform Cloud. But at a certain scale, it's going to cost you. Another thing that you're going to need to do as well, so that's protecting the state file, but you're also going to need to learn how to do state locking as well. The problem you're going to have is two people can work on the same state because two people can clone the repository and they can both work on it in their own way and they can both push their own changes via Terraform. But whose state file is right? How do they merge when you then put them back into Git? The answer is they can't. They're very, very complicated. The state file has a small little uh, sort of a toggle inside it to say what version it is, and that will collide with the other person's version, and the, you won't be able to merge those things. So your options are DynamoDB, which is usually the very common one, and that's paired with S3. So S3 to store the state file, DynamoDB to do a lock. I'll explain what that is in a second. Azure Files, if you put your state file in Azure Files, the actual files actually gives you two in one. This is the advantage to Azure files in that you, when you pull down the file, you can also lock it 
so that nothing else can access the Azure files or it says, it says that it's busy. And Terraform will honor that. So that means that another Terraform process can't actually go ahead and pull down that file, which is really nice. So that locks it out. So it stops multiple people working on the state at the same time. And again, of course, you've got that Terraform cloud option as well. So essentially, you want a state lock because you want to prevent multiple people from manipulating the state file at the same time. So the two key things that you need to remember when it comes to the Terraform state file is that you need to protect it from being from being read that means you can either encrypt it with a pgp key you can put it in something like s3 and make sure the GitLab you're using a GitLab runner that's the only thing that can access that s3 bucket and you want to make sure that you're using state locking as well so that two people aren't trying to override the same state file at the same time and that in a nutshell is terraform state file management that are two critical things that you need to be aware of i hope that helps head on over to learndevops.com.au and join the community and feel free to ask questions how do you manage your state file what system are you using see you around very nice